Heart failure is a leading cause of death in the United States, claiming approximately 380,000 lives annually. Heart failure used to be serious and life-limiting. A diagnosis of heart failure typically meant a life expectancy of three to four years. However, significant advances in the treatment of heart failure have changed that outlook. Today, in many cases, heart failure is reversible, which means that it doesn't always progress and can even be reversed, offering hope for a better prognosis and a better quality of life. The approach and goals for treating heart failure have evolved significantly over time. In the past, the focus was on relieving the symptoms of heart failure. However, modern treatment strategies now aim to slow the progression of heart failure and, in some cases, even reverse its effects. By targeting the underlying causes and mechanisms of heart failure, an ever-expanding range of medications and surgical treatments has transformed the diagnosis from a death sentence to a chronic condition that doesn't necessarily progress. This shift has led to remarkable improvements in patients' quality of life and extended life expectancy. In this video, we will explore how heart failure can be reversed and the primary treatments available. In the next few videos, we'll also take a look at various medical procedures and devices that are designed to effectively manage this condition. Before we begin, remember to hit the subscribe button and give us a thumbs up if you're ready to explore with us. All right, let's get started. Heart failure is characterized by the inability of the heart to pump blood efficiently throughout the body. The most common symptoms are shortness of breath and swelling of the lower body. People experience heart failure differently. Symptoms may appear suddenly or develop gradually over time. Injury, hemodynamic changes, or neurohormonal activation can lead to deterioration of cardiac function. When this occurs, the heart undergoes cardiac remodeling, which includes both structural and functional changes. Initially, left ventricular remodeling may compensate for abnormal hemodynamics and function. However, if left unchecked, it ultimately leads to deterioration of cardiac function and a poor prognosis. Two major systems involved in cardiac remodeling are the sympathetic nervous system and the renin-angiotensin-aldosterone system. Activation of these systems triggers intracellular signaling pathways that stimulate protein synthesis in myocytes and fibroblasts, resulting in cellular hypertrophy and fibrosis. Remodeling can be measured by assessing ejection fraction and changes in ventricular dimensions, wall thickness, volumes, and mass. To understand how heart failure can be reversed, it's important to understand two basic concepts, ejection fraction, EF, and cardiac remodeling. Ejection fraction is a measure of how effectively your heart pumps blood. It indicates the percentage of blood pumped out of your heart's lower chambers, ventricles, with each contraction. Ejection fraction, EF, is calculated by dividing stroke volume, SV. The amount of blood pumped out of the ventricle with each contraction by end diastolic volume, EDV, which is the total amount of blood in the ventricle before the contraction. The formula is ejection fraction equals the stroke volume divided by the end diastolic volume multiplied by 100, expressed as a percentage. In a healthy heart, Ejection fraction ranges from 50% to 70%. This means that with each heartbeat, 50% to 70% of the blood in the left ventricle is pumped out to the body. A low ejection fraction usually indicates the presence or risk of heart failure. An ejection fraction outside the normal range can indicate different conditions. A range of 40% to 49% is typically considered to be a mid-range ejection fraction. The heart's ability to pump is slightly below normal. You may not experience any symptoms of heart failure, or you may have symptoms during physical activity but not at rest. 39% or less indicates heart failure with reduced ejection fraction, HFREF. Your heart's ability to pump is significantly lower than normal. The lower the ejection fraction, the higher the risk of life-threatening complications such as cardiac arrest. Symptoms can be severe and can affect you even when you are resting. Your ejection fraction is an indicator of how well your heart is working. Regular monitoring of ejection fraction during treatment helps to determine whether heart function is improving. 
Cardiac remodeling is a physiological and pathological condition that can occur after events like myocardial infarction, MI, pressure overload, such as aortic stenosis or hypertension, inflammatory heart muscle disease, myocarditis, idiopathic dilated cardiomyopathy, or volume overload, valvular regurgitation. When these conditions arise, the heart undergoes extensive remodeling through the accumulation of fibrous tissue in the myocardium. This process distorts tissue structure, increases stiffness, and contributes to ventricular dysfunction. In response, the heart may compensate by working harder, which can lead to swelling and further scar tissue buildup, impairing the ventricle's ability to fill and pump effectively. Initially, you may not notice the effects of a slightly reduced ejection fraction, but as heart function continues to decline and ejection fraction worsens, you can become seriously ill. Therapies are aimed not only at relieving key symptoms such as shortness of breath, fatigue, and leg and abdominal swelling, but also at slowing disease progression and reducing hospitalizations. Several medical therapies have been shown to promote reverse remodeling, restoring a more normal ventricular shape, reducing left ventricular volume and mass, and improving left ventricular ejection fraction, LVEF. These structural and functional improvements are associated with reduced morbidity and mortality. The treatment of heart failure patients with reduced ejection fraction involves a combination of established medications and newly developed pharmacological therapies. In our next video, we'll take a look at some treatments that have been proven to successfully reverse heart remodeling. Stay tuned for more details. If you have any questions or comments, please don't hesitate to leave them below. If you found this video helpful, we'd appreciate it if you could like and subscribe. Thank you for watching.